Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the latest edition of Terrace Talk. The big games keep coming for Norwich City. Two huge games on the road this week, starting off with a trip to Hillsborough on Tuesday night. And with that, delighted to be joined by Sheffield Wednesday fan James from the Wednesday Till I Die podcast. Um, James, thanks for joining me, of course. How are you feeling, I suppose, at the moment? It's kind of been a little bit of a difficult few weeks for Sheffield Wednesday, still in the relegation zone at the time of recording. Um, yeah, what's the mood, I suppose, around Hillsborough at the moment? Yeah, hi Adam. Thanks for having me on, mate. Yeah, it's, you say a difficult few weeks. I think it's been a difficult season, to be honest. Um, we've been down in the bottom three uh, since game week two, so we're, we're quite accustomed to it now. We've uh, have been down in the bottom. It's been yeah a very very strange season, you know, with Cisco Munoz as manager not winning a game in thirteen, which I think you know no team has ever survived relegation having gone that long uh, without without picking up a win. Um, and yeah, we've had some great form of late, um, uh, but then you know we're now four games without a win, and and that all that positivity seems to have just vanished. I mean, two of the games were against you know uh, Ipswich. I, can't, I don't know if, I don't know if I can say that that team name on here, but you know Ipswich and uh, and Leeds, which you kind of get you know get, but, but um, yeah, it's it's, it's a, a strange season, um, and I, I feel like these next upcoming games are almost like you know going to define the season whether we stay up or not I feel like we're on the cusp and as a as a fan you know we lose a game and it's the you know the worst thing in the world we win a game and we're going to stay up it's literally like that you know flip-flopping every single week at the moment yeah of course we're recording this prior to your trip to QPR but six games to go at the point of recording do you think you've got enough to survive I mean you're only kind of a couple of points off the drop zone but you know there's a lot of teams that are playing each other around the bottom a few starting to pull away from from that relegation sort of, you know, it, it sort of, I suppose, battle up there at the bottom, do you think you've got enough to survive the drop? It's such a weird one because when you're losing every single week, which, you know, it feels like we are at the moment, you know, three defeats out of his last four, it's very difficult to, to feel like you're going to you're gonna get out of it. I mean, the gap was, was 10 points. We got beat 4-0 by Huddersfield a couple of months ago and that gap, that was a massive six-pointer and, you know, the gap went to 10 uh, to safety. You know, the gap now is two our goal difference is really poor, so it's effectively three points to safety. And as you know, that can all change. You know, by the time we play each other on Tuesday, we, we may well be out of the of the bottom three. Not really sure that's going to happen because Plymouth they've sacked the manager and they're playing Rotherham on Friday night. So uh, we'll we'll see what happens on that one. But you know, we, it's um, yeah, it, ju- it just feels like you know the, the the recent games that we've that we've had. Like I said, the 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 forms really dropped off the the mood is is really is really dropped down as well and yeah it's going to be uh, it's certainly going to be interesting anyway yeah of course you had the change of manager in october danny roll appointed fairly unknown but of course had a, a spell at southampton and various clubs in germany feels like he's sort of brought sheffield wednesday fans on board i've sort of seen a few videos of him celebrating after games feels fairly united and probably one where if maybe you had him from the start of the campaign you might be outside the, the drop zone but what what sheffield uh, wednesday fans made of him yeah, if buts and maybes, I think comes to mind with uh, with him. Joe, you know I've never seen a manager be so kind of like buy into the fans or the fans buy into the manager so much so soon as well. You know, he, he didn't win his first couple of games. I mean, look, the bar wasn't set very high. Uh, Cisco Munoz was awful. The football we were playing was absolutely terrible. So I think even I could have been manager and still got you know uh, and still got a better tune out of the players than what he did. Having said that, though, you know, like I said, he, he, he's buying into the fans you know uh, we've, we've got a big fan base you know 20 odd thousand fans 26 27 thousand at Hillsborough you know on a regular occurrence uh, and yeah he's you know when, when the results go our way he's walking around clapping the fans really appreciates us as well and I think you've got to do that especially when when times are tough you know getting the fans on board really buys you extra time you know the results aren't going to go our way you know we know that would I don't think we're good enough um in terms of um you know, in terms of the squad and everything else, the reality is it is going to be a battle. So you are going to lose more games than you win. But if again, if you've got the fans on board, then again, the the atmosphere is going to be a lot better, and you're going to get the fans off your back. And yeah, he obviously was at um, he was at Bayern Munich uh, as well. You know, they won the Champions League when he was the assistant manager. He was at the German national side. That was his last job that he had. So yeah, he's got a good pedigree, I think. I have to be honest, and I think there's certain things that he's trying to get the team to do that they just can't do. Um, he's been, like I said, he's been at Bayern Munich. Their squad is worth, well, I dread to think what, what their squad's worth versus what ours is worth. Top quality players that, you know, that are giving 
a level of performance which is far greater than what than what ours is at Sheffield Wednesday. This is his first managerial job as well. Uh, so I think it's been difficult for him to kind of adjust to, um, you know, f- for players to be able to do exactly what he's trying to do. Maybe it's a little bit too complex. Um, you know, he's, he's very data driven. He, he loves, you know, the, 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 the stats and the, the analytics side of football, which I think foot, which is a good thing. Because that's where football's moving now. It's very much moving down that, that model and that route. Um, but yeah, the, the, these certain times, especially when he first came in, where I think the players just got a bit lost and didn't really know what they were trying to do. We, we see very much in possession, it's one 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 shape, out of possession, it's something else. I know that's nothing new. I know that happens quite a bit, but the, these times where you, you know there's been huge gaps in in uh, in our play that were you know especially in like when we're defending and other teams, certainly the better teams, can just exploit that. And before you know it, you know you're one or two goals down and. And then that's it. So, but no, on the, on the whole, I think everyone's really, really happy with Danny Rill. I think the worry is that if we get relegated, will Danny Rill still be here next season? There's no, there's no indication that he's going to leave. But similarly, there's no indication that he's going to stay. There's been nothing said on his contract length or anything like that. So, uh, I mean, with with the chairman that we've got, who knows what's going to happen? But yeah, that is certainly a massive worry because you know he's one of the, people are saying one of the best managers that we've had, and considering with, that we're be potentially going to get relegated this season is pretty mental, really. Yeah, who's been sort of the star player this season? I know you brought in Ugbo uh, sort of in January. He seems to have sort of found the, the goal trail and scored some really big goals at different points. Of, you know, there's the likes of Barry Bannon, which doesn't really need any exp- or, you know, introduction, I suppose, for anyone in the Championship. We all know the quality that that man possesses. But um, yeah, who's, who's maybe the one to watch for Tuesday night? Yeah, um, it's a really weird one, this, because I don't, I don't think anyone's really shone. It's very difficult to pick a, t- uh, pick a player in a side that's, you know, scored only 31 goals um, and sat, you know, currently sat 23rd in the league. It's very difficult to pick someone out, especially given the season that we had last season, of course. Um, you know, I, I think the person that we probably have to pick out is Deshaun Bernard. Um, I, I'm not sure if he's going to play on Tuesday. He has picked up an injury. He's uh, he's one that came in in the, in the summer from Man United Academy, a Jamaican international. He's uh, very solid at centre back. Um, someone who I think probably will play. Um, although again, he's he's he has been injured uh, for the past couple of games. Is Jan Pervedo. We've got him on loan from Leeds. He is a very exciting prospect. He's, he's 24 years old, so he's not he's not too young. You know, he's struggling to break into the lead side, uh, but he, he came in January and you know gave us a massive boost. He's, you know, the, he's got all the tricks of the trade. He's uh, he given the ball in his fast feet. Um, he, he he runs into gaps that aren't even there, but somehow comes away with the ball. He's not scored as of yet. He's only got one assist, but he's certainly one of those players that when he gets on the ball, um, he can certainly get you on the edge of this uh, on the edge of your seat. There's another two, Jedi Gasama and Anthony Musaba. Again, both came in uh, in in the summer. They came from um, Musaba came from Monaco. Gasama came from PSG. Don't get too excited. They didn't play any first team football for those uh, for those sides. But they came in and um, I'll be honest. They are a little bit speedboat, no driver. They they do just run and run and run. Uh, they're really quick when they get on the ball. You know they can take on a man and, and they can really use their pace. Their final end product has been wanting a little bit, um, but on their day, you know, they're this type of player that will give you a 10 out of 10 performance and then next week, um, a la Monday against Middlesbrough, they'll give you a 2 out of 10 performance, which is a little bit frustrating, but I think sometimes you have to realise that, you know, at the end of the day, they're playing for Sheffield Wednesday, which, as I've mentioned numerous times, we're sat 23rd in the Championship. So if they had that pace and they had that end product, they wouldn't be playing for Sheffield Wednesday. Yeah, one player I did want to ask you about, a uh, former Norwich Academy graduate, um, Akin Famewo, uh, played 26 starts, I think, this season, 30 appearances overall in the Championship. Um, I know when we spoke back in December, there was sort of a little bit of uncertainty around him, whether he was sort of performing to the levels maybe you wanted in the Championship. But what have you made of him, I suppose, in, in the recent months since we last met? Yeah, he's been in and out this season. Um, no fault of his own, really. I think, you know, we, it's just been kind of trying to find his feet in terms of what um, what shape we're having, whether it's a back four or a back five. Um, it, it, we've been playing, you know, a, a back five or, or a back three, whichever way you want to look at it. He's been playing the kind of left uh, left sided centre half, which, yeah, he's been, he's been all right. I think he's one of those players that he's not been pulling up any trees, but I think sometimes with, with your defenders, you just don't want them to really be in the limelight. You know, you don't want them to be, you know, um, making all the mistakes and talking about them in, in that sort of way. So in that regard, I suppose no news is good news when, you, when you're when talking about a defender. Um, 
he did, you know, he did come a little bit unstuck against Middlesbrough. The other two uh, centre backs that we were playing with, uh, Michael Hequa and Bambo Bambo Diaby, aren't great at playing out from the back, and we just insisted from playing out from the back every single time. And it was just a carbon copy every single uh, every single time we had a goal kick. Fameiro would pass it to Beadle. Beadle would pass it to to Fumewo. It would go to Johnson back inside to to um, to uh, Barry Bannon, and then we'd just kind of lose the ball. And he was having a bit of a tough time, really. You could see he was getting uh, getting frustrated, and he wasn't really helped by Johnson on the left hand side either. So, you know, in answer to your original question, he's probably been. A seven out of ten this season. He's just been pretty steady, to be honest. And uh, yeah, like I said, not pulled up any trees, but not really made too many mistakes either. Yeah, of course, the game at Hillsborough feels a lot more difficult for Norwich heading to to your place rather than maybe the reverse game at Carrow Road. Our away form's been a little bit suspect at different points. Um, you've had a, an okay record at home: seven wins, five draws, eight defeats. What's the atmosphere been like at Hillsborough this season? We know it's sort of a notoriously difficult place to go in in the past. Yeah, up and down. I think. Um, if we, you know, if we get the, if the fans are on side, then the atmosphere can be absolutely fantastic. I feel now more than ever, there's a bit of a, you know, a rallying cry. You know, the six games left is make or break. You know, when and the fans could obviously make the difference um, whether whether we stay up or not. You know, ultimately it might not make any difference, but certainly going into these games, that's certainly what you what you think. Um, yeah, home form of of late hasn't been too bad. You know, in the last six, three wins, two draws, and. And one defeat. The problem is we just don't score enough goals. We have so many chances. The game, the last home game was against Swansea. We drew the game one-one. Um, if it finished four-nil, I would have probably said, yeah, that that's probably fair. As in a four-nil win for for Sheffield Wednesday because we just didn't put the ball in the back of the net. We had multiple chances to score, but as our you know the story of our season's been, we just don't score enough. I think there's only one of a team that um, when you look at the XG as a kind of um, bigger difference on the XG. I think it's ours minus 10. So we should have scored 10 more goals than we actually have done. If you add that into into certain games this season, then you know the, the points tally would obviously be a lot lot higher. But you know, the game's not played on XG. You have to finish your chances. Our leading goal scorer has only got six goals. I think I think you look and your top three leading goal scorers are all in double figures. Add them together, they've scored more goals than our our total squad combined. So so yeah, um it's just a case of finishing your chances. We're not clinical enough. Um, so it's going to be interesting, you know, when we when we play on Tuesday, if we can put our chances away. I, th- I don't think we're going to get many chances when we come up against you know good sides. We do kind of give up possession on purpose. You know, it's almost like come on, you you, you go and do your thing and try and break us down. And uh, you know, we don't play. It's not it's not really counter attacking football, but it's more like you know more to frustrate you more than anything that you know we do. I play like a bit of a, a mid block and um, I mean, it's frustrating to watch from our point of view as well. So, uh, so yeah, it'd be interesting to see what happens on Tuesday night. Yeah, you mentioned our goal scorers. Intrigued to get your thoughts on, on Norwich. Of course, we met back at Cow Road in December, a 3-1 victory for Norwich on that given occasion. Have you seen much of Norwich aside from that this season on the TV? You know, there's probably an opportunity maybe tomorrow if you're in a pub before the big, big game there at Loftus Road to, to catch us. Um, yeah, what, what have you made from afar? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm I'm actually in hospitality seats uh, tomorrow, so I'll be tucking into a nice three course meal ahead of uh, ahead of the QPR game. So I might catch it. You never know; they might have it on. Um, but no, I've I've been you know I've been impressed with Norwich. I'm a bit surprised. Obviously, you had that slip in form, um, kind of you know you had a great start, and then all of a sudden you look at the league table and you see Norwich down in you know 16th, 17th place, and you're thinking, Christ, what's happened? Uh, what's happened there? But you know you've uh, you've got some fantastic players. When we played each other at Carrow Road, um, it was a game where you know we'd, we'd just got a new manager we did the performances were a lot better but we were going there thinking mm, it's probably going to be a defeat I thought that you know you're a bit wasteful with your chances in the first half but in the second half the the quality just shone really and we, we hardly laid a glove on you in that second half so yeah it's um you know Norwich is obviously from the outside looking in very much a yo your side you know Premier League Championship you can almost guarantee that the following season, you'll be back up there again, and uh, and then back down the, the the season after. It's it's a bit of a shock to see Norwich, you know, not in the Premier League at the moment, but um, but nice. No, it, like I said, the, the little bits that I have seen, and, and certainly the game against us, you can see why you're why you're a good side. Just things perhaps just haven't kind of clicked so far this season. Yeah, so that's very fair. Moving forwards back to, to Tuesday night, um, how do you expect Wednesday to set up? I mean, is there going to be any changes you could see? Obviously, quite a tight turnaround from from Saturday to Tuesday. Any sort of key injuries, I suppose, that are well known before the, before this uh, huge game on Tuesday? 
Yeah, well, Jan Paveda came off the bench against Middlesbrough. Uh, didn't really have much of an impact, but we were already 2-0 down when he when he came on. Um, he's one that I think is going to start this weekend and then, you know, barring any injuries, will probably start on Tuesday because he's by far our most, uh, our most creative player. Um, we haven't really got... I mean, well, Josh Windass and... Um, Callum Patterson are two players that are a fit for this weekend. Danny Real said that in his in his press conference. So interesting as to whether we see uh, either of them this weekend. You know, they might be on the bench, which means you know they, they may be in contention for Tuesday. It's, it's, it's at that stage of the season. Danny Real came out and really berated a lot of the players. Normally he he stands by them and, and defends them and, and says it's down to the tactics and things. The performance on Monday against Middlesbrough was absolutely shocking. Uh, and, he, and he came out and said, you know, exactly that. And he didn't call the players out by name, but he said that, you know, there was occasions where, especially for the second goal, the players were just walking. We had a corner uh, and they broke and, you know, barring two or three players, the rest of the squad were just were just walking back and looked very, fairly disinterested. So um, it's going to be interesting to see whether there is any changes for this weekend against QPR. And then, yeah, d- d- depending on what the what the result is, you know, we'll see what happens on on Tuesday. Like I said players have come back, but um, we haven't got that many players available. And one criticism this season has just been the strength in depth. The, the subs come off the bench and they make no impact whatsoever. It's literally just fresh legs. There's, there's no player that comes on and, and can change a game. Yeah, uh, As I mentioned on my on our pod that we did earlier, when we go behind, um, we've only we've won one and drawn one. I think there's only um, Millwall that's picked up less points from losing positions than us this season. Um, we've picked up four points, which is just not good enough. So yeah, the first goal is going to be key on Tuesday. Yeah, and with that, I'm, g- I'm going to ask you for a score prediction. Norwich unbeaten in the last five meetings, uh, two straight victories at Hillsborough um, in sort of recent times. I think it's 2018. You'd have to go back to to, to find the last Wednesday win. But is that going to change on on uh, Tuesday night? Uh, if I'm being perfectly honest, I mean, I'm going to give you two. I'm going to go with my head and my heart because I can't really come on here and say that we're Sheffield Wednesday are going to get beat. So my heart is saying that we are going to put in a good performance and perhaps beat you 2-1. My head is probably saying, just like at Carrow Road, you're probably going to be too much for us and it might be the, the same fixture but the other way around and, and you'll perhaps win, beat us 2-1 too. Yeah, I think it's going to be a tight and cagey game. Yeah, first goal. Feels like it might be key. And before we round off, James, just want to plug your podcast and where uh, Norwich and, and Sheffield Wednesday fans can go and find your guys' content. Yeah, so it's uh, the Wednesday Tired Eye podcast on social media. It's at WTID pod. Uh, we record uh, Sunday night, so you can listen to that Monday morning. Um so yeah, the, we'll probably be talking about this game, you know, uh, the, the following week. We also do a debate show in midweek, which is live on on X as well. So yeah, we'll probably be talking about this Norwich game in more detail on that. So that's uh, Wednesday at eight o'clock. There we go. We'll link all that down below. James, do really appreciate you joining me this lunchtime. Okay, a huge, huge game there for, for Norwich on on Tuesday night. A, a really big week, as I mentioned at the start of the show. Feels like two games that could be. Pretty definitive to where Norwich finished this campaign. Hopefully we come away with two good results and we're still in and around the top six by the time we preview this show ahead of Preston. So thanks for joining us and we'll see you in the next one. 